Ever wonder what it's like to work in space? The brave men and women of the International Space Station are truly a special breed, but at the end of the day, they're just regular people going about their jobs. So join us today as we shadow our higher-ups and learn all about a day in the life of an ISS astronaut. When hurtling around planet Earth at 17,100 miles per hour, standard human notions of day and night start to look pretty silly. In a normal 24-hour stretch, a typical ISS astronaut will see the sun rise and set 16 times in total. Human bodies did not evolve that way, so a regular 24-hour Earth day is maintained up there, if nothing else to prevent the crew descending into a grim spiral of permanent crippling jet lag. And while it might seem from the internet that all they do up there is strum guitars and make funny videos, in fact, astronauts' schedules are rigorously itemized down to five-minute increments by an ops planning team working at Mission Control. The day usually runs from 6am to 9.30pm, pegged to UTC, which is basically the same thing as Greenwich Mean Time. Anyway, let's start the day. Lights go on at 6am. Astronauts will typically still be in their sleeping bags, which are affixed to the walls of their telephone box-sized cabins to stop them bobbing about. Before they get up, not that up or down have much meaning on the ISS, crew might read emails, digest the news online, or check any overnight missions sent across from Mission Control. First things first, a hop in the shower, right? Well, no. The best astronauts can hope for hygiene-wise, despite working out twice a day, is to squirt a pouch of warm water and a trace of soap onto a washcloth to rub themselves down with. Longer-haired crewmates like to use a special rinseless shampoo applied to their scalp and rubbed vigorously through with a towel. This requires very little water and was developed for hospital patients who can't shower. At least you never need a hairdryer. There's even a specially adapted hair cutting machine called the Flowbee, essentially a pair of clippers attached to a vacuum cleaner, which prevents stray stubble from floating away and clogging up vital ISS hardware. Toothbrushing is broadly similar to the process on Earth, and astronauts are even allowed to bring up their own preferred brand of toothpaste. The main drawback is, with no sinks or running water, astronauts pretty much have to swallow at the end. It's time to get dressed. Astronauts usually wear casual short sleeve t-shirts, as the temperature aboard remains a constant 72 to 73 degrees and there's rarely any reason to get doled up or wear a jumper. They change their clothes as seldom as possible, often wearing the same items for days at a time. This is because there isn't much storage space and certainly no washing facilities on the station. After a few days, the smellier items are stashed in a mesh bag, ready for the next resupply mission to dispatch to a spectacular fiery death on re-entry, hopefully having brought fresh supplies beforehand. Inevitably, even in space, nature calls. As you might expect, visiting the bathroom in a microgravity environment throws up an assortment of grim challenges. For liquid waste, each crew member is issued with a personal urinal funnel they attach to a fan-driven vacuum hose. This fan sucks any and all liquids away, whisking just next door where, alongside moisture condensated from the air, their wee is broken down by electrolysis to generate fresh oxygen and make the next batch of drinking water. Solid waste has its own wholly separate system. Well, it's the same fan. Feces are sucked away into a wastewater tank and sealed in a plastic bag. It's considered good etiquette, by the way, for astronauts to at least try and remember to leave a fresh bag for the next crew person. Unlovely as this setup is, it's a vast improvement on older space station's orbital facilities. On the now defunct Russian space station Mir, a power failure once forced cosmonauts to defecate directly into emergency plastic bags until a repair could be made. Morale is said to have suffered badly. Anyway, let's go to breakfast. Toast is definitely a no-no on the space station, as are sandwiches, because crumbs are a disaster in zero-gravity environments. Not only are they messy, but if left to float away unchecked, they get lodged in tiny crevices and encourage the growth of fungus. There are no conventional fridges, although a company called BioServe Space Technologies is trialling a substitute aboard right now. But there's plenty to eat nonetheless, like scrambled egg, oatmeal or waffles. True, much of it is dehydrated, brought to life with warm water, but there's also lemonade, coffee or tea, so long as you don't mind drinking through a straw, of course. After breakfast, part of a rigorously planned diet that's carefully monitored by nutritionists, it's time for a crew call to Mission Control to go over the plan for the day. Nearly every single task on the ISS is carefully scripted, and astronauts have their activities planned in step-by-step -step fashion down to the finest detail. Some of the most important duties involve maintenance, both preventative tasks carried out before things go wrong and the corrective approach once something's actually broken. Cleaning filters is important, as is the disinfection of surfaces, updating computer software and even taking out the trash, which usually goes into the Russia-launched Progress service vehicle. On occasion, the crew's maintenance duties will require a spacewalk. 
This can be for jobs as apparently mundane as changing batteries on the exterior of the station, but still necessitate four hours just to suit up and a 100-page checklist to run through. In case you're wondering, yes, there's a diaper in there. Typically, the crew move through the interior of the ISS using an array of handrails which are situated at intervals on every surface. It's said that during extended missions, astronauts' calluses vanish from the base of their feet but reappear on the top, because this is suddenly a very crucial body part for keeping them upright and steady. As well as those handrails, surfaces in the ISS are usually adorned with strips of Velcro. This is to help stop handheld tools, pens and other items from drifting away and getting lost, sometimes for frustratingly long periods. After a solid morning of work, often in solitary roles but sometimes teaming up with colleagues across the Russian-English language divide using a dialect astronauts affectionately refer to as Runglish, it's time for lunch. While the days of the week make even less sense than the difference between night and day in space, the ISS crews still maintain a distinction between weekdays and weekends and share a ritual meal together as a team on Sunday. Weightlessness creates issues for everything aboard the ISS and cooking is no exception. Convection, the heating principle on which most Earth-based ovens run, doesn't work in orbit. Hence, most meals are prepared from dehydrated ingredients and hot water. This is also to prevent fungus from taking hold amid moist stored foodstuffs. Some food items, beefsteak for instance, come pre-sterilized with ionizing radiation, which helps prevent spoilage. Condiments like ketchup, mustard or hot chili are all available to spice things up, as are salt and pepper, albeit in liquid form so the granules don't drift away and cause havoc with station operations. Deliveries of fresh food such as fruit happen periodically throughout the year. Takeaways aren't really an option, except for back in 2001 when Pizza Hut memorably sent a family-sized salami pizza on a Russian rocket as part of a million-dollar marketing stunt. Mission Control is keenly aware of the importance of fresh supplies to the morale of the hard-working ISS crew. After washing their hands, with disinfectant wipes because remember, there's no sink, it's straight back to work. The main mission for the ISS team is to conduct scientific experiments and further mankind's understanding of life in space. So the most important and exciting work they'll do is essentially in the role of lab technicians, guided in their actions by scientists on the ground. And the ISS is positively bristling with labs. Russia has two mini-research modules. The US lab is called Destiny. Columbus is run by the European Space Agency. The most recent lab is Japan's Kaibo, which includes a special platform allowing experiments to take place outside the station. Just some of the questions being explored concern the effects of low gravity on living cells, artificial materials and even miniature explosions. A veritable menagerie of animals, from mice to ants to fish to worms, often participate. But it's fair to say the most regular experimental subjects are the astronauts themselves. As such, they need to stay in good shape. So when all that scientific work is done, it's time to work out. Each crew member is required, as part of their duties, to work out for at least two and sometimes more hours every day. Partly, this is because gravity on Earth naturally keeps human beings' bones and muscles in good condition as they are constantly working to keep us upright. But in space, muscles atrophy and bones grow brittle unless constantly worked. Astronauts also work out to combat the dreaded space snuffles, an unlovely condition where bodily fluids, no longer lugged downward by gravity, accumulate in the head. In order to stay trim and clear-minded, astronauts make use of three main pieces of gym equipment specially designed and calibrated for life on board. There's an exercise bike, which doesn't have a seat because you don't need one in zero gravity. There's also a treadmill, onto which crew are secured with bungee straps. It has a clever vibration isolation system built in, so astronauts' heavy footfall can't disturb the delicate science going on elsewhere on the ISS. The third main piece of workout equipment is the so-called Advanced Resistive Exercise Device, or ARED. The most recent addition to the ISS onboard gym, ARED uses clever vacuum-sealed cylinders to mimic resistance up to 600 pounds as an alternative to lifting heavy weights. If you're wondering how astronauts cope with the sheer tedium of pumping iron for two hours every day while teams on the ground monitor their vital signs and provide coaching, don't worry. There are screens for watching movies and even scope to get competitive. In 2012, a NASA athlete named Sunita Williams competed in the Malibu Triathlon using ARED as a makeshift swimming simulator. What's your excuse? After an evening meal, which can sadly taste a little bland as aroma doesn't really work in low gravity and blood surges to the sinuses thanks to those space snuffles we mentioned, it's time to unwind before bed. The ISS does have Wi-Fi, clocking in at an impressive 600 megabits per second via the Tetris satellite system, so astronauts can and do spend a lot of time online. Many choose to phone home. 
There's also the station's beautiful cupola, surely the ultimate vantage point for just sitting and watching the world go by. At night, astronauts return to their sleeping bags. These bags have special armholes so users keep restrained but can still type or read a book. Some issues to overcome with catching 40 winks include the ISS's constant humming noise. It's been compared to a constantly running vacuum cleaner. Earplugs, it's said, help out a lot. Another more disturbing consideration for dozing astronauts is airflow. Experienced crewmates try to align themselves at night with the station air vents. This is because warm air doesn't rise in space, so sleeping astronauts in poorly ventilated sections can wake up gasping for air, surrounded by an invisible bubble of their own exhaled carbon dioxide. At the very least, this causes splitting headaches. Once they eventually drift off, seasoned astronauts are even said to dream in zero gravity. Oh, and despite everything else that's different up there, snoring is apparently still very much a thing. What do you think? Does all that discomfort and middling food seem worth it to become a pioneer of interplanetary exploration? Let us know in the comments, and don't forget to hit subscribe for more high-living tech content.